Hello, a big welcome, and thank you so much for joining us for the first ever English speaking class of One Healthy World, the international program that will revolutionize your health in six weeks. My name is Dr. Josh Cullimore. I'm a medical doctor. I've worked as a GP for several years in London and Brighton in the UK, but I'm now based in Washington, DC as the um, preventative medicine director at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. We are so excited to have so many of you joining us from all over the world. Um, I can't keep up with the chat box. We have so many people entering where you're from, which is fantastic. We've got people from Canada, Sweden, um, Chicago, the UK, Atlanta, um, Hawaii, Hungary. So wherever you are, thank you so much. You are so welcome. Um, if you are hoping to get healthy in 2022, I can tell you that you're in the right place and you're joined by participants all over the world taking the same journey at the same time. Um, so I'm delighted to be joined today as a co-host by Dr. Neil Barnard, the president of the Physicians Committee. Hello, Dr. Barnard, how are you today? Hello, Dr. Cullimore. Uh, what a great event this is. I, I, like you, I've been mesmerized to see all of the places that are, people are joining us from. So it's wonderful to see. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, just to give you a bit more information to everyone who's joining us, um, One Healthy World is a brand new international six week program running in four different languages. So this is clearly the English program, but we also have programs in Spanish, French and Mandarin. Um, to help you wherever you are um, to take charge of your health simply by um, changing your diet. And the new year is a great opportunity to do that. People have resolutions, different health goal goals. Um, it'll be really nice to know actually um, in the chat box um, what your particular health goals are. So do you want to lose weight, improve your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your blood sugar, reduce your risk of cancer? just improve your energy levels, feel better. So yeah, please do tell us in the chat box. Whatever your goals, uh, One Healthy World is the life-changing program that will help you to reach them. So every week we're going to be joined live by international guests, including nutrition experts, doctors, chefs, people who've had extraordinary improvements in their health. And we're going to discuss the health benefits in some detail. Um, provide recipes, meal plan ideas, have cooking demonstrations, panel discussions with our experts, and, and hear some, some amazing health success stories. So the last two years have obviously been extremely challenging for, for so many of us and have really highlighted the role of our lifestyles and, and chronic disease that make people more vulnerable to the virus. And an, another lesson of the pandemic is that human, animal and planetary health are all interconnected. So in addition to the, the multiple personal health benefits, a change in our diets can dramatically reduce our environmental footprint, antibiotic resistance, animal suffering, and the risk of new zoonotic diseases, which jump from, from animals to humans. One of the positive things to come out of this pandemic is that we've all learned how to use Zoom. So thank you for joining us. Uh, this is how we're connecting across the world. So a few comments about, um, how, about Zoom. You're all using the, the chat box, which is great. So please do use that for any general comments or, or questions. Um, Rosendo Flores from the, the Physicians Committee will try and answer those. If you have any specific um, nutrition related questions, um, please put that in the Q&A box. Uh, which is also at the bottom of your screen. Um, we are lucky enough to have Susan Levin, a registered dietitian at the Physicians Committee, who will do her best to answer those. As you can see, the chat box goes very quickly, so it's easy for us to miss, miss questions if you put them in there. Um, so yeah, please put them in the Q&A box. Um, but yeah, we want to hear from you. So moving on to today's programme, we'll, we'll shortly kick off with Dr. Barnard explaining why and how we should change our diets. Dr. Shireen Kassam will discuss diet change and weight loss. Uh, Jackie Salomon will share her personal story of her health journey. Registered dietitian Karen Smith 
will give us some important tips on meal planning. And then we'll be joined by Dr. Gemma Newman for our expert panel discussion. So without further ado, I'm very excited to present Dr. Neil Barnard. Dr. Barnard is an adjunct professor of medicine at the George Washington University School of Medicine and president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Dr. Barnard has written more than 100 scientific publications, 20 books. Um, he, in 2016, he founded the Barnard Medical Center as a model for making nutrition an essential part of medical care. So Dr. Barnard, I will hand over to you to tell us uh, more about why and how we should change our diets. Thank you very much, Dr. Cullimore. And thank you again for all of you for, uh, for joining us. If you haven't yet jumped into the chat to let us know where you're watching us from, please do. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about why we might wanna change our diets and what direction this might bring us. Let me share my screen. And hopefully I've done this all right. Okay, you go to the doctor. You say, I've got a little too much weight and my cholesterol's high. I've concerned about my blood sugar and my blood pressure and my digestion's not so good and all these things are issues. And, and you might have noticed that doctors aren't necessarily right there with the nutrition information. They might say a few diet changes might help. So what's that mean? Eat more chicken and take the skin off the chicken. Eat more fish and have more chicken and take the skin off the chicken and eat more fish and have more chicken without the skin and have more fish. And then the doctor says, well, I guess the diet didn't really lower your cholesterol very much. I think you're gonna need a stat. Your blood sugar is high too. Let's talk about insulin. And about your blood pressure, oh, wait, stop. Three decades ago, Dr. Dean Ornish, a young doctor recently out of training said, wait a minute, let's look at all of this in a completely different way that ended up turning a real page. He said, let's look at animal products. That middle column that you see is cholesterol. That right-hand column you see is saturated fat, which causes your body to make more cholesterol. And if you contrast that with foods from plants, anybody notice the difference? <laughs> There's no cholesterol in plants at all, almost no uh, saturated fat. So Dr. Ornish started a study to help people who had heart disease to see if it could be reversed. Vegetarian foods, half hour walk every day, manage stress, avoid tobacco. That was the whole Ornish program. Very simple. But the results were dramatic. The first result is that people actually liked the diet. It was delicious and they weren't hungry and they weren't restricting calories and carbohydrates. They were eating abundant foods and they knew that all the foods loved them back. But what really happened that impressed everybody is their cholesterol is fell, especially LDL, bad cholesterol, 37% drop. That's like what medications could do. But this was done with asparagus and beans and rice and fruits. And your average person lost 10 kilograms, that's 22 pounds. But what made medical history was that everyone had an angiogram and you could see the arteries opening up again. Arteries that had been closed leading to heart attacks. They were reversing themselves. Now, this is an artery in a slide. This is an angiogram that I got from Caldwell Esselstyn, a medical pioneer at Cleveland, at the Cleveland Clinic. And you could see that crinkled up left anterior descending artery. That's an artery that's very sick. And after 32 months on a vegan diet without any medication, this is that same artery. Now, if the little photo strip is getting in the way, drag it, away, drag it to the side because I want you to see what happens when an artery heals. And there's a lesson here. The body can heal. Our research team said, okay, let's look at type 2 diabetes. As you know, diabetes is a one-way street. Once you've got it, you'll always have it. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse, leading to heart disease, other complications. Our team was funded by NIH to test a plant-based diet against a conventional diet. The conventional diet said, cut calories, limit carbs, limit bad fats. The plant-based diet said, no animal products. Keep oils low. 
favor low glycemic index foods. Those are foods like fruits and beans and green vegetables that don't spike your blood sugar the way, say, white bread might. And to cut to the chase, when we track A1C, our key measure of blood glucose control, it improved on the, on the conventional diet, but it improved three times more on the vegan diet. And that made medical history too, because it meant diabetes may not be a one-way street. This is Vance, one of our very first research participants, started the vegan diet, lost 60 pounds over about a year, stopped his medications. His A1C dropped from 9.5, which is frankly a risky place to be, to 5.3, which is totally normal. Most doctors were not ever prepared to see a patient on medication with a high A1C, get off their medications and have a totally normal 16 year old type A1C, diabetes being cured. But now we see this every day. It's a new way of thinking about food. And that's what we're starting now. Okay, this is Chicago. Chicago started the Chicago Health and Aging Project. And what they wanted to see is, is it just heart disease? Is it just diabetes? Is it weight? Is it blood pressure? Or are there are other things that we can do too. They brought in thousands of people, and one of the things they looked at was saturated fat. You know what I'm talking about? Bacon fat, cheese fat, meat fat, the kind that raises cholesterol. But what they looked at is individuals who ate relatively little and those who ate much more, and the risk of Alzheimer's disease was cut to less than half in the people who tended to reduce their saturated fat intake. We got power over something we never expected to have. And our own team started looking at hormonal issues, both for young women dealing with endometriosis, menstrual cramps, but also for women at the other end of the reproductive window. They're having hot flashes. Our team brought in a group of women. They were all having hot flashes that drove them crazy. Half of them started the diet, half of them didn't. And a low fat vegan diet with soybeans as part of the diet, knocked out the moderate to severe hot flashes by 84%, no medications. So now we know that nutrition is more important than it's ever been because added to these pandemics that we have of diabetes and heart disease and so forth, we also have, that's right, the coronavirus pandemic, 6,000 people died yesterday of COVID-19, about a third of them were here in the United States. And as soon as this pandemic emerged, we knew that if you were, if you were thin, you were much less likely to come to succumb to this disease. If you were obese, much more likely. If you had diabetes and it was out of control when a virus arrived in your house, the risk of dying was really high. But if your diabetes was under good control or you didn't have it at all, mortality was much lower. So researchers then more recently in the past six months published incredible data showing, all right, we know that not only does diet affect obesity and diabetes, which are underlying conditions that can increase the risk of severe COVID, but the condition itself might respond to a diet change. Healthcare workers in six countries were studied and those whose diets were more plant-based had a 73% reduced risk of severe COVID. Those who followed the opposite, a fad, low carb diet were 48% more likely to have severe COVID. And then the COVID symptom study, you know about this study, it was done in the UK and the US. Half a million participants, as soon as the pandemic began, they started tracking their symptoms on their cell phones. And 30,000 plus developed COVID and they also tracked what they ate. And if you looked at the risk of getting any kind of COVID, mild COVID, People who are on more plant-based diets had a 9% reduced risk. Okay, not very impressive, but well, wait a minute. Let's look at those who had severe COVID. 41% drop in, in risk, in addition to masking and vaccinations, whatever else a person might do, if they're on a healthier diet, they are less likely to succumb to COVID-19. And then most recently, researchers started looking at vaccinations. They studied 86 healthcare workers. Everybody had the Pfizer vaccine and they measured their waistline and looked at their smoking and blood pressure and cholesterol. And what they found, let me show you with the waistline. On the x-axis here, the further out you go to the right, that's a bigger waistline, more body fat. 
The higher up you go on the y-axis, that's whether you were able to make good protective antibodies in response to being vaccinated. And what they found is that the heavier people were, the less likely they were to be able to make healthy antibodies. So it looks like a healthy diet doesn't just protect against diabetes, heart disease, blood, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's disease, hormonal conditions, and even the risk of COVID, but it might even influence whether you can respond to a vaccine. All right, so I wanna change my diet. I wanna take advantage of this, but what do I do? What is a healthy diet anyway? Well, it's these healthy foods, fruits, grains, legumes, and vegetables. Take your vitamin B12, and let's break the diet change into two steps. Let's take a week to check out the possibilities. Here's what I'm gonna suggest we do starting today. Take a piece of paper, I want you to do this. Write down breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack and just fill it in with ideas of things that you'd like that happen to be vegan, okay? We'll have plenty of time, don't worry. You don't have to do this in the next three minutes. We're gonna do this over the next week. And if you like Italian cuisine, think about vegan options that you can get at your favorite restaurant. Latin American cuisine, same story. Chinese cuisine, Japanese cuisine, whatever it is that you like. If it might be vegan, let's write it down, including fast food. Maybe it's not fancy, but it can be vegan. So let's go with it. Take a week, give us a list, Share your ideas today in the discussion. And once you've got your list, a week from today, let's jump in, let's do a three week test drive. Let's go vegan, let's see how it goes. Try our 21 day vegan Kickstart app. It will give you lots of uh, menus and recipes and cooking videos and is a great place to start. All right, back to you, Dr. Fellamore. Thank you so much, Dr. Barnard. That was really powerful. Um, some fantastic information already. And I can see from the chat box that, um, People have found that really, really helpful and lots of conditions that people are hoping to tackle are things that you've mentioned, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, the menopause. So this, this program is really going to, uh, to you know, be so helpful to, to people struggling with those conditions. So now I'm going to um, hand over and introduce my friend, uh, Dr. Shireen Kassam. Uh, Dr. Kassam is a consultant haematologist and honorary senior, senior lecturer at King's College Hospital in London and the founder and director of Plant-Based Health Professionals UK. She's created a nutrition course for medical professionals at Winchester University. She's the author of the book Eating Plant-Based. She's done many things. She's an extremely busy person, so we're really pleased and honoured to have her with us today. So, um, Dr. Kassam, I'm going to hand over to you now to tell us um, a bit about diet and uh, weight loss. Thanks very much, Josh, and um, thank you very much, um, Dr. Bernard. It's lovely to be here um, and meet you all and hear about you in the chat. So um, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes just talking about my top tips about how to maintain a healthy weight. Now, I thought I'd share a story. Um, this is my husband. He's also a physician um, here in the UK. And at the start of the pandemic in the UK, in the first lockdown, he found himself obese with an elevated waist circumference, hypertensive and with a high cholesterol. And it was just the knowledge of the pandemic virus and the outcomes that were worse in individuals carrying more weight that we've just heard about that gave him the impetus to really reclaim his health. Now, so why is it so important that we focus in on weight today? Well, carrying too much weight really does impact every aspect of our health, and it can be unnoticeable until it's just that much too much um, too late. Um, you know, having too much weight really does create inflammation in the body, which can then um, decrease our insulin sensitivity, it can make us insulin resistant and give us type 2 diabetes. It's important for heart health to maintain a healthy weight, brain health, cancer risk, people forget that carrying too much weight is an actual risk factor for developing cancer. And one of the newest diseases um, called fatty liver disease, where we lay down this fat in the liver, and that causes us problems. And of course, we've just heard about carrying too much weight can really increase our risk of a bad outcome from the pandemic virus. But we've known for decades, which particular foods impact our weight, which foods make us put on weight and which reduce our weight or keep us at a healthy weight. And here you can see in red, a lot of the foods that Dr. Barnard mentioned, red and processed meat and poultry. So meat 
increases we weight as we age. Frying potatoes, so potatoes are not bad, but really having lots of fried foods with um, uh, oils will really increase your weight. Sugar sweetened beverages, so free sugars. Processed foods in general, um, prepackaged or those that you um, buy in the supermarket. And of course, having lots of added oils, which are heavy in calories, can really um, halt your progression in your weight loss journey. But in contrast, the healthy um, plate that Dr. Barnard shows full of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, beans and nuts are exactly the foods that are associated with a healthier weight and help you lose weight if you need to. So what did we do? Well, just as a cheat sheet, and I'll put it in the chat uh, a bit later, we have a fact sheet um, on plantbasedhealthprofessionals.com website about top tips for um, managing your weight. And this is what we did at home. So we chose the low energy density foods. So they're low in calories, but really high in nutrients. So that comes back to the fruits and the vegetables and the whole grains and beans. And these are the same foods that are high in fiber, a nutrient that we're severely lacking in as a nation, as a society, certainly in the UK. And fiber keeps us full, it regulates our um, blood sugar, and it feeds our microbiome, which is so key to feeling well. We swapped out the white rice, the white flour, and other refined grains for the whole versions, brown rice and wholemeal flour, if we were going to eat bread. Um, reducing or eliminating oils, which are really heavy in calories, one tablespoon is about 120 kilocalories, can be really useful. So minimizing or removing, I don't cook with oil. Emphasizing non-starchy vegetables, such as leafy greens and cruciferous and peppers and courgettes and things like that, really help fill you up, but um, are lower in calories. Avoid the fruit juice and the smoothies. If you're trying to lose weight, fruit, if smoothies can be useful in other settings, but not so much when you're trying to lose the weight. Stay hydrated because sometimes when you feel hungry, it's actually you just need to have some fluids, stretch your stomach, feel hydrated and you feel better. Getting rid of as much of the processed foods as you can and cooking simple meals from scratch really helps. Consider your meal timing. So eating earlier in the day and having um, smaller meals at the end of the day can really help you maintain weight um, eating with your circadian rhythm. And of course, it's more than just diet. Every aspect of our lifestyle is important. So manage your stress, move more and regularly and prioritize sleep. And just to come back to a really key important point about weight management, we really need to concentrate on foods that are low in calorie density, but high in nutrients, all the micronutrients like the potassium and the magnesium and the phytonutrients that are really only found in abundance in plant foods. And if you look at this simple diagram, you'll see that calorie dense foods such as oil and cheese and meat have lots of calories, but don't have much um, volume to them and doesn't fill and stretch the stomach. We all eat about four pounds of food a day. So it's much better to eat four pounds of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans that will really fill our stomach, whereas the four pounds of the cheese and meat won't make us feel full. And again, this fact sheet I'll post in the chat is available on our website. So this all brings us to the fact that people who stick to a plant based diet, minimizing or eliminating animal foods, have the best chance of staying healthy throughout life. And this has been shown again and again, with each step that the animal products reduce from pescatarian to vegetarian to vegan, the vegans are the only group here in this study from North America that maintain their health, um, healthy weight throughout their lifespan. So what do we eat? People get worried that this sort of diet is not abundant, but there's over 20,000 edible plant foods and it's colorful and varied and you should learn to try new fruits and vegetables every week if you can. So it's things like soups for lunch and a very good breakfast of oats and some plant yogurt or with some soya milk, some stir fries or some steamed vegetables with a nice dressing. We love curries and spices really feature in all of our cooking, but even simple dishes that we're all used to, like a um, whole grain pasta with a lovely sauce, um, is filling and healthy. So how is my husband doing now? Well, thankfully, um, after a year into the pandemic, um, we'd managed to get his weight down to a healthy body mass index, his hypertension had reversed, waist circumference much healthier, and his cholesterol into a much healthier range as well. And we've been able to maintain that. And part of it's also getting out in nature, spending time with our dog um, and enjoying some um, healthy um, activities as well as diet.
So my top tips of supporting my husband really are always be prepared. It's things like taking your packed lunch with you. Don't get caught short with snacks. Have something with you, a portion of nuts, um, a, a piece of fruit. Find your support. So we did it together um, and I supported him through it. But you need a friend or a family member who will make you stick to your plan. Learn some basic cooking. I'm not a big chef. I don't spend hours in the kitchen, but you just need some simple dishes like Dr. Barnard was talking about that you make more plant based and, and full of variety of fruits and vegetables. I love using herbs and spices because the same fruits and vegetables and whole grains and things can taste so different with a different combination. Batch cook. I spend the weekends making enough meals for, for the week so that, again, we don't get caught short on a long, busy day. You've got to remember your why. You know, my husband knew the facts, but it finally took the pandemic um, to get him into action and actually do something. And of course, we all trip up. You don't need to worry. Um, there's a chance to get back on the right route and one or two days of not doing it 100% is absolutely fine. So we also have a 21 day um, plant based challenge So anyone here from the UK, it will have UK sort of nutrient requirements and and shopping lists that you'll be familiar with. So do check that out. I run this course at Winchester University. So if we've got any health professionals on the call, it's available globally, online, remote um, in your own time. So um, do check it out. And um, this is my book that will answer quite a lot of your questions that I'm seeing in the chat about eating plant based things like protein and calcium and iodine and all those things that come up all the time. So do check it out. And I write a weekly blog that will bring you and keep you up to date with the science. Great. Thanks very much, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Shireen. That was really helpful and um, really encouraging, useful, practical tips there. And lots of um, appreciation and astonishment of your, your husband's weight loss journey. Someone couldn't quite believe it was the same man. And, uh, and some lots of love for your dog as well. So <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so now I'm going to um, introduce you to uh, Jackie Salomon got great pleasure to introduce Jackie. She is an indigenous woman from uh, Puerto Rico uh, and is a social climate and food justice activist on a mission to promote healthy nutrition through her nonprofit organization, Seeds to Inspire. She supports communities in need in the Phoenix, Arizona area, uh, as well as surrounding uh, reservations. So Jackie, thanks so much for joining us. Um, could you tell us your, your personal story and, and what happened when you changed your diet? Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. And a matter of fact, this kind of brings me full circle because this is kind of like physicians committees where my journey started really. So in 2016 is when kind of our health hit just like a wall. We have been struggling with our health as a family. There was four of us at the time and my twins were about 14 and they were being diagnosed with prediabetes, high cholesterol. One of them was diagnosed with having a hole in his heart. We, he had a heart murmur and the, they sent him over to the pediatric um, cardiologist and they discovered that he had a little hole in his heart. He had to be monitored every year. At the same time, we were fighting a lot of injustices in the school system. The public school charter system was doing a push out of children that learn differently, our trans children, our children uh, that identify as BIPOC. So all of these things were kind of going on at the same time and the stress just kind of buckled. And in 2016, it was just, okay, so you wanna put my, my 14 year old, my 15 year olds on statins? I mean, that's the solutions, that's the only thing that we have and it was just done. So I started researching. I started researching, we were all obese. I mean, all obese. At the time I had reached my highest was 323 pounds. So I'm so glad we're talking about how the weight, um, the vulnerability that, that, we, that we carry when we have the excess weight, because it's really critical. I was thinking about that, about the pandemic. Um, so anyway, getting back to 2016, I was on this journey to say, okay, there has to be another way. I refused to put my children on stands. But what was really painful for me was that in 2009, I had allowed my son, my eldest son, who was 11 at the time, to be put on a mood stabilizer, which ultimately took his life. He developed Stephen Johnson syndrome and passed away. So when it was time for my children that were also facing these really chronic diseases, that the alternative was either procedures or more pills, it was just, 
it was just not an option. They were already on ADHD medicine. They were on depression medicine. We were all healing from the trauma. We were all trying to just manage life and it just was collapsing. I had almost lost my life twice in this process. I, at one point, I, I had a month long menstruation and I needed to have an emergency blood transfusion. Another time I had kidney stones blocked at the same time and I went septic. And it was these, these realities that was like, okay, am I gonna orphan my children? Am I gonna lose another child? Like, I don't understand, like there has to be something else. What is this that's going on? Why are we sick? Why do I have diabetes? Why are my children this sick? I don't understand. So it was kind of like that drive, that mother in me that was like, enough. I, I know there has to be something else and I'll find it. And so I started researching and I came across Forks Over Knives, the documentary. And absolutely, it was as if there was something inside of me that said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew there was something else. And I just dove in and started learning right away. I joined uh, the TCO McCann Center for Nutrition Studies and I took the, the plant based nutrition certificate. I was introduced to the Physicians Committee for Responsible, Responsible Medicine, but all of Dr. Barnard's books started implementing, started cooking. And really by November, it was just, we're just done. We're not doing this anymore. Within a year, we had lost as a family 300 pounds the four of us, we had lost 300 pounds. I had lost 80 pounds just myself. And within that year, my type two diabetes was undetectable. My hypertension with an arrhythmia, undetectable. My anxiety, my restless leg syndrome, my insomnia, my gastric reflux, just gone. But the most beautiful part was being able to watch that in my children, was to be able to take my son to the cardiologist a year later and his hole was undetectable, they couldn't find it. And the cardiologist told me in that office visit that he had just literally that week had opened the chest of seven babies to repair the same exact thing. And my son got to walk out of the office healed. And that is the power of plant-based nutrition. That's why I do what I do. It's because I see profound healing, not only in myself, but I got to watch my children. And it was kind of like, it was, there was an anger that built up in me, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it was like an anger that made me kind of just wanna rage out at the world. It was an anger that motivated me. It was an anger that was like, wow, there's systems in place and there's foods in place that I'm giving to my children. And I was hijacked as a mom. I thought I was feeding my children with love and everything that they loved and everything that they wanted was making them happy. And they were slowly, slowly we were all dying. And I was just so enraged that I said, okay, there's, there's, we got to do something. I want to scream from the rooftops. I want to go to my communities and say, we don't have to live this way. You know, my, my great grandfather passed away after his third heart attack. My, my dad's mom, she passed away from, from catatonia. My grandmother passed away because her intestine exploded from chronic um, IBS and constipation. Like this is the, the, the trauma and all the diseases that were just kind of just burying us alive. And that's not new, that's no more. We literally have shifted. My children are not on any medications and they used to be on ADHD medicine. They used to be on anxiety and depression medicine and they're thriving. We got to, to, to get them into a school for children that learn differently. I fed them whole food, plant-based, no oil foods all day long. That wasn't easy. They were teenagers, it was pushed back. So I started finding all their favorite foods and making sure I got up really early in the morning, make sure they had their pancakes and you know everything that I could find that was just kind of like pleasing to their palate and help them transition. And I made it fun. I made it fun, I made it a challenge because now I felt like I was being truly the best mom that I could be. Like I was truly living that, that goal of mine to just be like, create an environment for my children to thrive and it starts inside of them. And I just felt that now I was capable, like nobody was taking my job of loving my kids. I was gonna love my kids, mind, body, and spirit. And I was able to do that, finding whole food, plant-based, no oil. And now I've lost 164 pounds, 164 pounds. And that wasn't going to the gym and running myself. No, that was honoring my body's ability to be naturally in homeostasis and heal. It was honoring my body for what she was asking for, for nutrients. She was asking for nourishment and she just wanted to be healthy and happy. And I kept interfering with that unconsciously. It was subconsciously, I didn't know because of the foods that were available to me, the foods that I knew that were comfortable. But once I shifted and I started 
gaining a new relationship with food. And I really started falling in love with the idea like, wow, this is not just a pepper. This is like no more hypertension. This is no more gastric reflux. This is like, you know, no more headaches. Then I could really fall in love with it all over again. And it's just been absolutely a transformation for me, mind, body, and spirit. And that's why my nonprofit does what we do. And we work so hard to bring this message to our at-risk community excuse me, communities that have the least access because everybody deserves to know what healthy feels like, everybody. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie, for, for sharing your story. Um, you know, so much love in the comments for, for your, your story. And, you know, people are saying you're an amazing woman and it's true. So, so thank you so much for, for that really powerful story. Um, and yeah, showing us what changing your diet can actually do um, together together with your love and strength um, that's, a, that's quite a, a powerful combination so thank you for that thank really, you thank really you appreciate, so much appreciate if i may just add one more thing mm, to that please. because i because thank you so much for the love and i think to me that's the most important thing is that this is this movement is all about love. It really is about taking back the idea of what loving yourself means. It's about regaining that agency and that sovereignty over your own well-being. And we do have the power to do that. And there's a huge community out there that are bringing this information, like this amazing women are, this amazing organization. It's in our hands. We just have to remember. And when we stop inviting the trauma into our bodies, now we have space to kind of deal with everything that else is in there. So let's make ourselves healthy and help each other heal because that's the way to, that's the way forward. 100%, 100%. Thank you so much, Jackie. My honor, thank you. And uh, we'd we'll, uh, like to invite you back to join us again a bit later for our panel. Um, but next up is uh, Karen Smith from uh, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Karen is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator with over 16 years experience in public health and community nutrition. She helps patients and runs programs at the Barnard Medical Center in Washington, DC. Um, so here to talk about meal planning and meal ideas. Welcome, Karen Smith. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for that introduction, Dr. Colin Moore. I'm so excited to be here and to perhaps be a guide for each of you to start building your own uh, plant-based meal plan. And we're gonna get started by taking a look at the power plate. Um, the power plate you see here just really simplifies the meal planning process. The focus is on building meals using foods from each of the four food groups. So you have fruits, grains, vegetables, and legumes, which include beans, lentils, peas, and soy foods. So I want you to think about how often you currently eat foods from each of these foods right now. All right, who eats foods from all four groups every single day? If you do, that's fantastic. And if you have room for improvement, that's great too. And we are here to support you along the way. So what I'd love for you to do now is to take that piece of paper Dr. Bernard wanted you to get out to write down meal ideas and start to think about the foods from each of these groups that you're gonna start incorporating to build your meals, all right? It's great to have a variety of different foods from each of the four food groups. So let's start with fruits. You know, write down fruits and start thinking about what you're going to buy this week, what you might try that's different from what you normally have. And all fruits are on the table. Everything from apples to berries to melon to kiwi, they are all on this plan. And think about um, having a variety of color, the, those colors in fruits and veggies and plant foods signify different antioxidants and phytochemicals. So you wanna eat the rainbow, you might've heard that before. And you can select from fresh, frozen, canned, all varieties. Um, let's move on to vegetables. All right, same, same approach. You have such a wide variety of options, greens and broccoli, onions and bell peppers. Um, write down the ones that you enjoy and maybe write down one or two new ones and think about how you're going to start using them to build your meals this week. And again, fresh, frozen, canned, they're all 
fine options. So let's move on to grains. And it's wonderful to favor whole grains, whole grains like oats and quinoa, corn, uh, barley, millet, all of these offer more fiber and nutrients, um, whole grain breads and cereals, things like that. They're gonna offer you more fiber and nutrients than refined uh, grains or products that don't have the word whole in the ingredient label. And lastly, but certainly not least are legumes. So legumes are foods like beans, all varieties of beans, kidney beans, chickpeas, black beans, whatever you like best, lentils, peas, soy foods. Um, so things like tofu and tempeh that are made from soybeans. These foods are high in protein and fiber and jam packed full of vitamins and minerals. Uh, and research shows that women and men who include soy foods in their diet are less likely to develop breast and prostate cancers respectively. And Dr. Barnard mentioned that really wonderful study that was recently published by the Physicians Committee showing that just a half a cup of cooked soybeans daily significantly reduced hot flashes in postmenopausal women. You can read more about soy in the resource portal. So just to recap, when you're building your plant-based meal plan, you want to set aside all the animal products. It's great to minimize oils, especially those high in saturated fat like coconut and palm oils, as well as processed foods. And we encourage you to build your meals around those whole plant foods, the foods from the power plate food groups. And nuts and seeds are whole plant foods, right? And they are high in fat. So anywhere from 70 to 90% of the calories in nuts and seeds come from fat. So depending on what your goals are, it might be a good idea to think of these foods as condiments and to eat them sparingly. All right, so what will you eat? Let's say your breakfast is typically bacon and eggs and white toast. What about having a bowl of oatmeal with some blueberries and sliced banana and maybe topped with a sprinkle of slivered almond, almonds or walnuts instead? Um, that one swap alone will make such a huge difference, right? You're taking a meal that has virtually no fiber, is really high in saturated fat and cholesterol and swapping it for a meal that has over six grams of fiber, less than one gram of saturated fat and no cholesterol at all. All right, so just in that one meal alone, make a huge difference. Moving on to lunch, you know, swapping a burger and fries for one of my personal favorites, a delicious hummus and veggie wrap or sandwich with a veggie or bean-based soup. And for dinner, how about trying something like a vegetable and mushroom stir fry over soba noodles or brown rice, maybe throw in some tofu or beans if you like. All of these are wonderful options. And if you need some more, we've got you covered. All sorts of breakfast ideas here um, from whole grain bowls like oatmeal or buckwheat with uh, different types of fruits. My personal favorite being buckwheat with frozen cherries and berries and you just let them thaw a bit delicious with some, some cinnamon. Uh, lunch and dinner ideas, lots more options as well. Feel free to share your favorite plant-based meal uh, in the chat. You know, let us know what your favorite is or help others. If you've been eating this way for a while, go ahead and, and let us know what, what you love best. And feel free to have a bean burger for breakfast and oatmeal for dinner, right? Like these beans don't necessarily have to be just for breakfast and just for lunch or dinner. And some snack ideas. Um, oh, here we go. So we've got um, all kinds of options for snacks, healthy snacks, my personal favorites being hummus and veggies and bananas. And again, let us know what are your favorite healthy snacks? So many options out there, baked sweet potato wedges, All right, so just a few tips when you're planning your meals. Um, as Dr. Kassam said, you know, it's always helpful to plan ahead. 
and not wait until you're hungry to make that decision for what you're going to eat. Have a plan. Uh, jot down three to four options of meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Stock your kitchen with healthy foods. You know, if they are available, if you have a variety, it's going to be so much more likely that you're going to eat them. And think about having just a few really quick, easy options um, for, for meals when maybe things don't go as you expect and you can throw something together really fast. Uh, the Physicians Committee has a really great three ingredient, three ingredient chili. It's black beans, salsa, and corn. Comes together in minutes, really, really easy. And again, as Dr. Kassam said, you know, you might batch cook. It doesn't take any longer to cook one cup of rice than it takes to cook four cups, right? So you can prepare a lot, save the extra so you have it ready to go on a busy night. Certainly using the leftovers is helpful. And, you know, recruit people that you live with, family members, friends, roommates to help you out along the way. Ask them for their input and ideas. What recipes would they like? Can they help with meal prep, chopping veggies? Um, or maybe with the grocery shopping. So three simple steps for meal planning is to first map out your week's framework. Just take some time to think about what you've got going on for the next week, when you might be dining out or ordering takeout. Maybe you always have a pancake breakfast on Saturday. So now, you, great, you can look for you know, a plant-based recipe for pancakes and write that in. And then you're gonna start filling in the week um, with some recipe and meal ideas. Um, and certainly taking into consideration when you might want to have leftovers. Maybe Monday night's a great night for you to cook and you wanna make a big batch of something to have extras for lunch and dinner the next day. And it's always wonderful to make substitutions with what you have on hand or what you prefer. So if a recipe calls for kale, for example, and that's not your favorite, but you love spinach and you have it in your fridge, go ahead and swap it out. You can make all kinds of swaps with beans and vegetables and grains, you know, based on what you have available to you and based on what you like best. And then step three, right, is to make a list and go do the grocery shopping, right? So you want to take inventory of what you already have, um, make sure you're not super hungry when you go to the grocery store, or you're ordering your groceries, you know, to avoid those impulse buys and stick to your list as much as possible. And again, ensure you're stocking up on lots of those whole power plate foods. So we just have a few ideas here. All of these are going to be available to you, right, for how you can build like a noodle dish using these power plate foods. Same for a grain bowl. What whole grain will you use? And again, there's so many options other than just the brown rice and quinoa that you see. Same for the beans. You can put in uh, black beans instead of split peas, so on and so forth. So all kinds of options. These are all going to be available to you. And as others mentioned, the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart app is an incredible resource and will make this even easier because it will give you a meal plan and recipes and grocery list for three weeks. So it really takes a lot of the work of doing this meal planning out of the process and you can learn which meals and which foods you like the best and work best for your family and save those. Uh, and pcrm.org slash recipes is also a great, great resource for um, helping you with meal planning. You can go there, type in an ingredient and search and see what recipes come up. Uh, same for searching by the, the meal that you want, all kinds of wonderful recipes on here as well. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I'm super excited to come back next week and hear all about what meals you've enjoyed and what you've added in this week. Um, and before I say goodbye, just wanna do a quick poll and find out which food groups you want to eat more of and you can check all that apply. Give people a few seconds here. All right, great. I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. So let's end the polling here. I'm going to share the results. Can everyone see that? 
So nothing really stands out. Pretty much everyone, I guess maybe the, the vegetables and the legumes people want to eat a little bit more of, but, but really they're all pretty close there. So that's great, love it. Um, wish you all the best for the, for the upcoming week. And again, can't wait to, to see you back here next week. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for that, Karen. That was fantastic. And you've really inspired uh, inspired our participants. Lots of great suggestions of recipes. Um, so now onto our panel, I'd just like to welcome all of our, our guests back. Uh, and for the first time, I'd like to welcome my friends, Dr. Gemma Newman. Um, Dr. Newman is the senior GP partner of a uh, family medical practice in the UK. Um, she's a founding member uh, of Plant-Based Health Professionals UK. She's an author of the book, The Plant Power Doctor, which is also her Instagram name. She has appeared in several documentaries and is the host of the podcast, The Wellness Edit. So welcome, Gemma. Um, and if I could start with you, Gemma, um, you really strike me as a morning person. So tell me, how do you, um, how do you start the day? What do you have for breakfast? Oh, Gemma, you're, you're still on mute. Hello, can you hear me now? I can, thank, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Honestly, that was a lovely introduction and I'm really honoured to be here with you all. Um, what a fantastic event and it's so lovely to see all the people getting engaged and commenting and hopefully making friends in that chat box. Um, so yes, Josh, you are absolutely right. I am a morning person. <laughs> That's <what> I guess. <laughs> um, I tell you what my favorite breakfast is. I really love my uh, plant power pancakes. Um, they're a fantastic treat breakfast for the weekend. And during the week though, when I have to go into clinic, when I've got to get the kids to school, um, when I'm in a bit more of a rush, I love to make a porridge dish for everybody. Um, sometimes I do it the night before so that it's overnight oats and you can really get those flavors to infuse. Uh, and sometimes I even add, this is a bit of an unusual idea, but I absolutely love it. I'm a big tea fan. And sometimes I'll pop a little bit of a, a tea bag into my porridge oat mixture, my oatmeal. And then the next morning, it's actually infused with that tea flavor. And it's absolutely delicious, may I say. It's amazing. I love both porridge and tea, and I've never thought to combine the two. So that's a great idea. <laughs> it's a bit different. Perhaps the Americans in the audience may not have tried that either. But honestly, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lovely winning combination. And um, you know, looking for whole grain breakfast, I, I love to add um, like sort of big oats if I can, uh, ones that are less processed if possible, and flax seeds or linseeds, I'm a really big fan. I always aim to have at least a big tablespoon or two, mix it into my porridge mixture or my oatmeal mixture. Um, and also chia seeds, I love chia seeds and I always like to add those in. We've got the berries, full of antioxidants, polyphenols. I'm a particular fan of blueberries. My sons like raspberries and banana. Sometimes you can chop up the banana, mix it in, and as you're warming it, it has this lovely sweetness to it, which really adds to the deliciousness of that dish. Sounds good. I wish it was breakfast now. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, how no, about, Jackie, how about you? What do you uh, choose for breakfast? Uh, I, I try to stay mostly raw, so it's really easy for me for breakfast. I usually start with my green smoothie, um, so really highly anti-inflammatory. Um, my go-to is avocado toast with some raw hemp seeds, raw sunflower seeds, and raw uh, pumpkin seeds mixed in. That's always yummy. Um, oh, chia pudding with homemade granola and fresh berries. That's always an easy go-to for me too. Those are my favorite ones. And then for my children, they like their waffles and their pancakes and their um, tofu scrambles and their home fries. That's always kind of staples also for us. Wow, sounds amazing. Uh, and, uh, and Shireen, how about you? Oh, I think I'm a, a, yeah, I'm a relatively um, a, a dull breakfast person. It's got to be the oats again. I think somebody in the chat's asking what's porridge. Well, it's just just oats and trying to elevate um, 
the nutrient um, density of the oats and try and go for some steel cut oats. And because I have a really stupid commute in the morning, I leave the house at six o'clock. I've soaked them overnight with some um, flax seeds, um, some cinnamon and some frozen mango or whatever frozen fruit I've got, soak them in my sort of ready to go pot and I can eat it on, my, on the train. Um, but I recently discovered you can make some really nice um, biscuits with porridge oats, banana, raisins, maybe even some chocolate chips, all just sort of mashed together, popped in the oven and it makes a good sort of breakfast snack as well. Perfect. And Dr. Barnard, how about you? What, what's your go-to breakfast? Well, I actually have a question for the whole panel. And that is a lot of the people who are watching now are people who have never had a vegan day in their whole lives. And in, or they might be, but maybe the people they live with couldn't imagine doing that. So is there a meal, whether it's breakfast or some other kind of day that you think would be especially appealing to a person who, who never really thought about going vegan, what would be the thing that if it were pushed across the table right in front of them, that they would say, now that's a bit of okay. Is there something like that that you could think of? Uh, Gemma, I see you nodding. What would it be? There is, and in fact, I've even got a photograph of it here. It is this dish right here. That's a mac and cheese dish, which is irresistible to anyone, whether you're omnivorous uh, or vegetarian or vegan. It's my mac and cheese, which is in which is in my book, Plant Power Doctor. And all you have to do to prepare it is so, so simple. You get some cashew nuts and you boil them with um, your sweet potato. Um, you've got some uh, carrots, some potato, uh, as well as the sweet potato. You cook them together, you blitz it, you add some nutritional yeast to give it some extra cheesy flavor. Now, Gemma, garlic. you said you blitz it. Do you mean one of those things that goes <laughs> Is that, yeah, is that blitzing? Yeah, with a, I blitz it with a blender. Okay, a blend, good. Yes, but you can do that with any kind of blitzing instrument. So it doesn't have to be a big blender. Um, but yeah, that, that's what makes it particularly um, easy to sort of trick your kids as well. Because sometimes if your kids are not used to it, they'll think, well, where's the cheese? <laughs> but actually, you know, it gives it such a cheesy flavor. Um, it's irresistible. And you can even sneak in a little bit of celery. So this is the magic of uh, putting it in a blender. We've got so many different veggies in there and it tastes just like your mac and cheese. And then you can pop it in the oven. And then once you've done that, you can get it to be nice and bubbly on top uh, and they'll never know the difference, I promise. Mac and cheese without the cheese. Tell me the name of your book again and what page is that recipe on? <laughs> okay, it's on page 225 and it's The Plant Power Doctor um, and Basically, this is my kind of go to. It gives you loads of science and data and the recipes to match. So you can't go wrong with it. I'll pop the link in the chat if you're interested. OK, great. Any other, any, any other super duper duper recipes that, that was just going to make a not yet vegan person really want to eat? Um, I'll jump in really quickly, Dr. Barnard. I think for my children, especially when their friends come over, that's always a challenge. It's like when their friends come over. So French toast is always a winner. Lasagna is always a winner. And wait, 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 for... wait, wait. French toast. French <laughs> yes. toast doesn't that have eggs and butter and all kinds of stuff. And how can I veganize that? Oh, can we veganize it? And it's even simpler. We make our own cashew milk right from taking cashews, just put it in a high-speed blender. We put some eggnog, some vanilla, some cinnamon in there, a little vanilla. And then we just take our homemade bread or we get bread from a local artisan. And then we just dip it in there and have a very um um, um, non-stick pan. And then we just make French toast and make it nice and crispy with some pure maple syrup. Always monitor because it's, you know, it's maple syrup. All but right. We always you have serve convinced that. Me. You have the, you nachos have convinced also. Me. All right. Here, here's what we're going to do. At the end of this program, we're going to get, we're going to see if we can get a link to Gemma's book or that recipe and your magical French toast recipe. We're going to circulate that to everybody who's registered for this. Okay, great. Back to you, Josh. Yeah, and I would just say as well, anyone that um, is a bit concerned that these uh, plant-based foods can be pricey, people hear that sometimes. Um, uh, Dr. Kassam's uh, website, Plant-Based Health Professionals, has um, some really good recipes with the prices, the breakdown, and some particularly cheap recipes um, for anyone that's concerned about that. Yeah, Shireen, are there, are there any particular recipes there that um, you would recommend? 
Oh, you put me on the spot. Oh, I have. <laughs> any, any of the ones, you know, with beans that you can either buy, you know, dried in bulk or even, you know, the supermarket own brand of, of tinned chickpeas or black beans. I mean, black beans are my sort of go-to. They sort of go into everything so well and you can load them up with whatever type of cashew cream or avocado and, and it's just full of um, healthy nutrients. So um, there's lo we've got so many recipes now. So just plantbasedhealthprofessionals.com. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much, panellists. I really want to carry on, but we're running out of time. So we're going to have to wrap it up there for today. But thank you so much. We really appreciate your, your time and uh, your help with this. Um, so, yeah, so um, just to hand over to Dr. Barnard, I think you've got one other um, uh, suggestion you wanted to, to get people started. Only when Susan said make a list and when I said it, we meant it. Come back next week, same, same place, same time. Let's share our list. And then if you want to, it's time to jump in. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, um, please join us again next week. Thank you so much, everyone who's joined us all over the world. Um, please join us again next week for class two, next Thursday, the 20th of January at 4 p.m. US Eastern Standard Time or 9 p.m in the UK or uh, 8 a.m. in Melbourne or Sydney or whenever it's convenient for you if you're watching this on demand. Uh, next week we'll be joined again by Dr. Neil Barnard, dietitian Karen Smith, Dr. Shireen Kassam. Uh, we'll also be joined by Chef Kola from Zimbabwe, Luke Tan from Singapore and Rahini Bajakal from the UK for our um, panel discussion of delicious recipes from around the world. Um, before we finish I would just like to uh, ask you to uh, save the date. Uh, we have a really exciting closing event coming up uh, for, um, on the uh, 15th of uh, February. Um, let me just share my screen. Uh, we are showing, uh, what well, it's going to be hosted by Chuck Carroll from the PCRM uh, podcast, um, The Exam Room. We're going to be showing The Game Changers which is a really powerful documentary um, with some big names featuring Olympic athletes, which will uh, revolutionize the way you think about uh, health and fitness and protein and strength. Um, so please do join us for that. And I would also just like to um, thank all of our partners who have helped to um, spread this message and promote One Healthy World. Um, so please do, uh, we, I recommend that you check out their resources um, for some, some really helpful information to, to help you on your, on your journey. So thank you again for, on behalf of all of our panellists. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic, healthy week and we shall see you the same time next week. <laughs>